So hopefully you had a chance to look at my previous videos where I talked about upgrading my home office network to 2.5 gigabit ethernet. And one of the problems I had with that is I was unable to upgrade the speed of my network attached storage. Well, now I've got hold of a new network attached storage unit, this time just with SSD capabilities, no hard drives, no physical hard drives. And it's also got five gigabit ethernet, which is much more than what I've got here. So in this video, I'm gonna do a review of the TerraMaster F4 SSD and tell you all about how I'm using it on my new faster network. So if you want to find out more, please let me explain. So a couple of key factors about the TerraMaster F4 SSD is, as the name implies, SSD doesn't take uh, traditional mechanical hard drives. It just uses NVMe uh, SSD drives, which means its design is overall very compact, but it serves a particular purpose. If you're happy with NVMe drives, and not hard drives, then this is a good option. And secondly, it's got that five gigabit ethernet, which is double than what I have here. And so it's really good as an upgrade for me for my network attached storage. Now I want to divide this review into three parts. First, we're gonna look at the hardware, what's there in terms of connectivity, the processor, the memory, all that kind of stuff. Second, we look at the storage options, as I said, NVMe drives uh, that are, you can plug into that. And third, we're gonna look at the software, how you configure it and what kind of software options it has. Okay, let's start with the hardware. So at the heart of the F4 SSD is an Intel N95 quad core 64-bit CPU that clock boosts up to 3.4 gigahertz and that's a 15 watt processor. Now it also has eight gigabytes of RAM and that is actually upgradable to 32 gigabytes of RAM. Now the reason why you want such a powerful processor and such a uh, large amount of memory for what is relatively just a simple task a network attached storage is because modern network attached storage devices can do so much more than just serve files as a Windows shared drive for example. We'll get more of that when we talk about the uh, software in a moment. Of course, it comes in a very compact design. It's really quite small compared to other network attached storage devices I have because you don't have to support those big 3.5 inch hard drives. You know, four of those all together are quite big by the time you also include fans and so on. Here, we're just talking about a small plastic box that has the motherboard for the CPU in the memory. And then just on the other side of the motherboard is those four M2 slots. So really very compact design. And in that design, they've managed to add in enough space for some active cooling, which is actually quite quiet. So only 19 decibels when it's running at its lowest speed. And so you've got active cooling blowing air over the CPU and over the NVMe drives. And you've also got a whole bunch of different ports. Now, talking of the uh, connectivity, we've got five gigabit ethernet, as I've mentioned. You've also got a USB-C connector, which is USB-C 3.2 Gen 2, which means you've got 10 gigabits a second. There are two USB-A ports, again, uh, USB 3.2 Gen 2, and there's a HDMI 2.1 connector. Now, one of the first things I did was connect uh, a cable to that HDMI connector. What does it give you? Actually, it just shows you the system messages coming out from uh, Linux and from from the uh, software there. You can't do anything like uh, watch med media over it, films over it, or you know photos or anything like that. It's just there for kind of a debug output. So in normal operation, you don't need it and you can completely ignore it. Now it comes with a 48 watt power supply. However, it's never gonna use that. The maximum it's gonna use when you've got four NVMe drives in there and it's doing all of its hard work, reading and writing from those drives is around 32 watts. And when it's idle, it's just as low as eight watts. Okay, so let's have a look at the story. So as I said, this is just PCIe NVMe drives. No 3.5 inch mechanical drives, 2.5 inch mechanical drives, no 2.5 inch SSD drives. It's just PCIe uh, NVMe drives. Now there are four slots in there. And the interesting thing is that two of the slots are PCIe 3 with two lanes, and two of the slots are PCIe 3 with one lane. So that really means that two of the drives have half of the bandwidth than the other two. Now I was looking into that and in most cases, when you're doing sequential reads and writes, for example, even the one lane PCI3 drives are gonna give you more data than the five gigabit ethernet can cope with. 
if you're doing random raids and rides and you've got a uh, raid going on that's going to be using both of those so again you're going to get more bandwidth than you are going to get out of the five gigabit ethernet but of course you want to put your first two drives into the first two slots to get that maximum performance however i don't think overall it will be a problem now i mentioned raid there part of the options you get with the software which we will cover more in a moment is to configure these drives into different raid configurations not only you've got traditional raid configurations like raid 0 raid 1 raid 5 there is also a t raid for terra master raid and terra master raid plus now they do have a calculator on the TerraMaster website where you can say, well, if I've got this drive and this drive, you know, what will give me the best redundancy? What will give me the maximum capacity? And you can play around with them. I've got two NVMe drives in there using mirroring. So what is on one is also on the other, which means that when one fails, uh, the other one is still there with all your data on it. And we'll talk more about what happens when a drive fails uh, in a moment. Now internally those drives as well as being in a RAID configuration can be formatted using ButterFS or EXT4 and if you connect in an external drive into one of those uh, three USB ports then not only does it support EXT4 and ButterFS also supports NTFS and FAT32. Now the device is currently rated up to 32 terabytes because it's saying if you put in air four drives of eight uh, terabytes each, then you're gonna get 32 terabytes in total, which is pretty impressive really. And onto the software, this runs TerraMaster's own operating system, which is built on top of Linux. It gives you a web interface. Now, when you first turn it on, you need to find the device. You can either do that through your web browser, just typing in tnas, terramasternas.local, found it for me. But there's also a program you can download for Windows, which is able to discover the drives, the Terramaster NAS drives that you have on your network. And then you can double click on it. And in fact, it just opens up a web page with the right IP address. I didn't have any problems. It was always found in every situation. It was didn't need to hunt for it at all. It was just always there. So the discovery process for these NAS drives is very, very simple. And when you first boot it up, if it's the first time you've used it, there is a setup wizard, which will just take you through the steps, installing the latest version of the software, configuring the drives in what configuration you want them to be in and uh, setting up the users. And then you just get through to a very easy to use web interface. Now that web interface can be used, of course, for configuring network shares. That's the whole purpose of network network attached storage. So of course you can share drives over Windows shares and there's a whole bunch of other things, everything from Windows shares all the way up to iSCSI targets, whole different set of varieties in there, all supported without any problem whatsoever. But of course, modern uh, network attached storage can do so much more. For example, you can install a Plex server, a Jellyfin server, there's even a torrent client. You can install Nextcloud. Uh, you can install Docker and run containers on there. So there's all these different options that you've got. And of course, once you get down the path of uh, Docker and containers, there is a whole bunch of other stuff that you could run on there just, just because it's in a container. Now, I don't go as far as to run Docker containers and things on my one, but I do run things like a Plex server or other things in Nextcloud because these are great things that you can add to your network attached storage great services that benefit from having that storage right there and then you're giving that uh, to your network to be used in whatever way you uh, see fit. Now this particular chip from Intel also supports hardware uh, transcoding so if you've got any fi video files that are in one format and you want them converted to another traditional let's say into H.264 for example then you're able to do that in hardware which of course speeds up the process and that's great if you're using something like Plex or Jellyfin. And of course, the other thing to mention is what happens when a drive fails. I formatted my drives in a RAID format, copied some files on it, and then I took one disk out. Uh, and uh, I, in fact, I tried it on both. It boots in both cases. Talking about booting, it does uh, boot to an internal memory. That's where the actual first bit of the operating system is stored in a kind of an internal flash drive. Uh, and then it then uses the main drives that you've plugged in. If you try to boot it with no drives in there, it will just say, I've got no drives please plug in some drives and then we can proceed from here. But in both cases, when I took out the drives and left one in there, it booted no trouble whatsoever, recognized the drive that was good, allowed the files to be served and said that the array array is in a degraded state. Please do something about that. 
you pop in back the other drive, you replace one that's broken, whatever the situation, and it will go ahead and synchronize those two drives uh, and get you back up and running at full speed. So I tested the disaster recovery and it did a great job. So in summary, what have we got? We've got a device which is compact. It's got good active cooling, but the fans are quiet. In fact, the whole thing is quiet because you don't have the noise of mechanical hard drives spinning up and the fans need to keep those mechanical hard drives cool. You've got a uh, five gigabit ethernet. You've got those USB 3.2 connectors. You've got a uh, software RAID. You've got the ability to add in up to four drives. You can configure those uh, into RAID. And of course, you've got other options basic network attached storage options, Windows shares, all the way up to deploying uh, Docker containers. So a lot of options and a lot of possibilities in a compact design. Okay, that's it. My name's Gary Sims. This is Gary Explains. I really hope you enjoyed this video. Love to hear your thoughts on the TerraMaster F4 SSD in the comments below. Have you taken the plunge to just an SSD only setup for your network attached storage? or are you still relying on mechanical hard drives? Love to hear your different thoughts on that. If you like this video, please do give it a thumbs up. If you like these kind of videos, I invite you to stick around by subscribing to the channel. And also please do check out my Patreon page. Okay, that's it. I'll see you in the next one.